All right, so I've now um, restarted the Windows 10 VM um, and we're gonna go back and check the settings. I've done this a few times now and what's interesting is it seems like I can't uh, turn off certain settings even through restart. Um, I was talking to one of my colleagues about this. It potentially could be that it's um, pushed through group policy. Um, even on a local machine. So I'd have to change the group policy for that to be overridden. Um, if I remember, I think it's in the virus and threat protection. Nope. Uh, manage settings. Yeah, so even on a restart, real-time protection seems to always turn on. Um, you can turn that off and that's fine. It doesn't require a restart. But then if I go to the app and browser control and then the exploit protection settings, um, the data execution prevention, I tried setting that to off by default um, and then it required me to restart my device. But every time I did that, it would turn back on. Um, the rest seemed to stay off except for that one. Um, so I guess I'll switch that off. I don't think it's gonna work. So I'm still gonna have DEP applied, um, which may be an issue for my exploit, but I've turned off the real-time protection. Um, oh. Default, that's fine. Cool, all right. So I guess from here, uh, we're just gonna go back to the Kali uh, before we do. I know I can ping out, but let's make sure that I can ping back to the Windows one. So just press up. And it looks like I still hit the Windows one. Um, to clear your terminal screen, you can just type clear. Oh, clear and hit enter, and that'll clear everything. All right, so um, what we're gonna use now is a couple of tools. Um, one's called MSF Venom. Um, that'll create our payload. So what I'm gonna create is an executable um, and the executable will um, create a reverse shell connection back to our Kali machine. Um, to catch that, I'm gonna use another um, very common uh, exploit framework and toolkit called MSF Console. Um, and to do that, I'll use a what's known as a multi-handler and then the payload will be the reverse shell to catch it. Um, and we should get that reverse shell back. And then right at the end of this video, I'll try and bring up the network connections and show you the connection that's happening. Um, then we'll try and do a couple of things and we'll see, I think the last time I did this, it dropped the payload quite quickly. And that's because of how good Windows 10 is at stopping some of this stuff. Um, so you'll see it work a lot better on like a Windows 7 machine um, server 2012, server 2016 kind of thing, but um, it's always a cat and mouse game with these kind of exploits. So let's go ahead and create a um, executable, uh, which will be our reverse shell. So like I said, MSF Venom, um, and then we're gonna select the payload. So the payload will be Windows um, Interpreter reverse um, TCP. So this will create a reverse TCP uh, shell. Um, the architecture is x86 that I'm selecting. So 86 is 32 bit, um, or 64 is the 64 bit. This um, seemed to work fine. Actually, let's not select it and see what happens. It might just select a um, 64 bit one, but let's go tech platform windows. So we know the machine that we're attacking is windows. Um, the file type is gonna be an executable. And the local host, uh, if we remember, so we can open up another terminal here. And I have config. Our IP address is 192.168.52.128. That'll be our local host. So it's saying, which IP address do we wanna connect back to? Eight. Um, we also need to select a local port to connect back to. Um, by default for uh, MSF console and a lot of these exploits, it's always 4444. Um, and then I'm gonna output a file as in the root directory and let's just call it something32.exe. And then hit enter. MSF Venom will then go and create the payload for us.
error invalid payload platform. Uh, this could be because I did ne need to select an architecture before. Or it could be that I need to put a double tack. Cool. So um, the architecture that it selected was x86 anyway. Uh, I didn't select any bad characters. That's the payload size, so it's quite small. Um, this is because we're doing a, a staged um, reverse shell rather than a non-staged. So the initial um, exploit will be quite small. And because we're going to use MSF console and the handler, it will connect back and then download more of the reverse shell so it has more functionality. Um, if we did a non-stage, this would be bigger, and it sends the whole reverse shell in one hit within the executable. Um, so let's also try and select the architecture, and we'll try both. So what I want to do here is go tack A, and then I believe it's just x64, um, and then let's go back. And change this. See if we can create a 64 bit payload since we know that the Windows uh, 10 version that we're using is a 64 bit. Uh, so it looks like it won't do a 64 bit. So that's fine. Um, we now can do so ls um, will show us what's in a directory. Um, and we can see that we have the something.32xe. Um, so with this payload, Normally, you'd need to deliver this to the Windows 10 box. Um, this could either be through a weak, uh, let's say the Windows 10 machine was running a web server um, and we were able to drop files into that web server and then we could execute them. Um, or you sent an email and you were like, hey, I really need you to click on this link and they believed you clicked on the link because um, they thought it was something important. So potentially we could put um, the payload in a PDF or something. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to drag it across, but uh, there are a few delivery methods that you could do to get the payload across. Um, and that's the step that we're missing here um, in this video. And it's more of a social engineering piece and the red team piece, but because this is just a demo, I'm going to skip that. So uh, it's in the root one. I should be able to copy this straight across. And hopefully Windows won't delete it on me. Um, so let's assume that oh, it's not letting me do that. Let's try and drag it. Uh, come back. All right. So it looks like. Even though I turned off a lot of the Windows security settings, it still picked it up as um, a virus, and that's common. So Windows Defender will pick up MSF Venom payloads um, quite regularly because it's got quite a unique signature. Um, and I just want to allow it on the device. And let's see if that's worked. Okay, okay. Oh, and it seems like my VMs have crashed. Let's try this again. It's lost my Windows 10 one, but if we go back into virtual machines, I have my Windows 10 client. So if you remember, basic root tour. So this will be fine. Um, so yeah, it was strange that it crashed on me. Um, normally I use VMware Workstation Pro. This could be a player issue. Let's see if it's kept it though. Go 
this fruit. So I've still got the executable executable that I created, um, which is fine. And let's check that it came across downloads. No, okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I might try and, I'm gonna drag it to my machine, just on the desktop um, and allow it because I know what it is. Uh, and if this doesn't work, I may need to set up a shared file. Cool. Um, I expect it, error, I'm moving the file. So maybe because the downloads file is protected, let's try desktop. Doesn't like desktop. Let's try documents. So it looks like Windows Defender is kicked up again. Device security. Off, 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 off. Huh, looks like it's all gone off now. Um, as we can see here, depth's now switched off. And threat protection. Hmm. Let's try again. All right. Um, okay. So let's try and set up a program. Um, so what I'm looking for now is the A shared folder. So my host path, um, let's just go desktop because that's where it is. Next, enable the share. Okay, so what I've done there is I've added a shared folder um, to the virtual machine and it's sharing from the host. So I'm gonna share the, the desktop folder on my host to this Windows 7 VM. Um, and then I should be able to access it through the network, shared folders, desktop, cool. So let's go into here. Looks like it's scanning it. I don't want you to do anything with it. I just want you to allow. Actions, allow. Cool. Let's see if I can now Drag this to my downloads. Cool. All right, so um, let's now assume that we've got this through uh, to a Windows 7 machine um, and it's now been downloaded into someone's folder and they're gonna click on it. Um, before we do this, I need to set up the handler in the Kali Linux machine. Um, and it's good to point out at how hard that actually was to get that on the system when I had control over the settings um, and how good Windows is actually in defending itself against um, well-known exploits, I guess. So, yeah. Um, so let's move into MSF console, which is the framework we're gonna use to um, catch the reverse shell. So you just need to type MSF console and hit enter, and it'll run up. <coughs> Um, it always prints out some ASCII art above it. Uh, let's go full screen. So what we're going to use is the multi-handler, like I said. As we can see here, the exploits that's been selected is multi-handler. Um, and then the payload is the payload that we made for the, um, the reverse shell. So Windows, some of this you should be able to tab complete. I'm not sure if it's working at the moment. Nope. 
um, interpreter and then reverse TCP. Uh, that not work? Ah, did work. It was just I used the wrong command. Um, so what I need to do was set. So the payload um, for the exploit has been set to the Windows Interpreter Reverse TCP. Um, I can then go show options. This will show me the options for the exploit that I have set um, and the payload options as well. So we can see here that um, what needs to be set is the, the L host because it's required um, and the L port. So if we remember with the payload, we had the port set to 4444. If we set this to a different number, and then try, and then the exploit on the other Windows machine ran, um, and we this wasn't the correct number. It actually wouldn't connect because it's going to look for the IP address and the port number. Um, yeah. So from here, let's remember the IP address, um, and we should be able to copy this. So Control Shift C, Control Shift C is how you copy in um, Linux terminals. So, and then I want to go set L host control shift V. Um, and that sets it. We can see that it's set to L host now. We can confirm by just going show options again. Um, and that IP address is now set. Uh, and from here, now this will run up a server. So all we need to do is run it. To do that, you just type exploit starting reverse TCP handler on the IP address that we have and the port. Um, and now we can just go back to the Windows machine and double click on the something.exe and this should um, create the reverse shell and connect back to our Kali machine and we should see it happen. So fingers crossed this works. So it's thinking about something. Let's go back and interpreter session one open. So we can see that we have a connection um, from 192.168.128 to the 129. So this is our machine um, and this is the Windows machine. So I think if we go sessions, tack J. Uh, no, sessions, tack I. Oh, no, it's also not working. Um, if I go sessions tag I and then go to the session number that was created, so session one. Ah, oh, must have dropped me straight into the session. Uh, so if I go get UID, we can see that there were MS Edge Win 10 IE user. So we know that we were the IE user on the other machine. Um, let's try and show uh, the connection. Um, so netstat will show us that. This name is full screen. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. So let's go netstat and try A and O. Um, so netstat will show you active connections. Um, and as we can see here, we've got this established. Let's see if the windows will let me do the same. One. Let's open up command prompt, run as administrator. Cool. Uh, and then netstat should be local on this machine as well. And as we can see here, we can see the the connection between the Kali Linux machine and um, the Windows machine. So it's on an ephemeral high port which isn't that important, but we can see here that we're connected back onto that 4444 port. Um, interesting, the PID, so the process that started on here is um, 6904. So we can go task list. This will show you the current running task. So it's the same as if you wanted to task manager. Um, and I think I don't remember what it was, 6904. So if we look for 6904, is uh, just here. So let's say you were um, watching your network traffic and you noticed the 4444 port. 
that's how you could correlate um, what it was. So it's going to tell you what process that that's running as. So something 32.exe. Um, and we can see we have an active connection here. Um, so that would show you that you have an adversary on your network right away. Um, I'm going to try and run a few more commands until my command prompt drops. Um, and then in the next video, we'll come back and um, we'll do some um, forensics on potentially you got told that you know something.32.exe was running on your system um, and you need to prove when it was running. Um, so I'm going to show you how to grab that data um, to prove that and to prove that it was executed as well, um, just at a basic level um, so you can start seeing some of it. Cool. So um, if we don't know what we need to do here, I think it's options. No, help. So help will give you all the commands. Um, so what I'm I'm actually in a interpreter shell at the moment. So uh, what do I want to do? So I did the get get UID, which shows me the UID for the um, the current user. Let's maybe try uh, the play command. Uh, yeah, let's try the play command and see what that does. Oh, I need to specify a path to the system. All right, let's try just get system. Um, actually, let's try dropping into a shell. So if I just type shell, hopefully this will drop me into a command prompt and it'll be the Windows command prompt. Um, and it looks like it did. So I can go, who am I? And I'm the Windows 10 user. Cool. So I could like move around um, from here. If I type exit, I'm back into the interpreter and I can go get UID again. Um, so now let's try get system and see if this works. So the idea behind get system is just to try a whole bunch of things and then elevate to an administrator user on the Windows 10 box. So to get system and the reason that it died. So it didn't, didn't work. Windows 10 didn't like it and it dropped my shell. So I now no longer have a shell connecting to the Windows 10 box. I once again can check that with netsat tac ano. If I scroll up, I should see um, I no longer have that connection anywhere to the Windows 10 one. I can check also check that on the Windows machine. So if I just go up to netstat tac ano, um, the 4444 four, four, four port is now gone um, and that something.32 is no longer running on the system. Um, interestingly enough that when I tried to run get system, um, there's still some windows security features that even though I allowed that program on the system, cause it tried to access administrator, it's now deleted it from my downloads folder. Um, it'd be interesting to see whether it's downloaded it from the shared folder as well. No, so it's still there. So it hasn't linked the two. Um, but yeah, that's, that's very interesting that it's done that. Um, so I'll leave it here and in the next video, I'll go over a forensics instance of um, how we can prove that this file was executed on the computer and how we're going to pull that.